Humans are pretty weird. I mean, we went from early ancestors that look like this to a creature that looks like, well, this. Thanks to countless years of study, the picture of our evolution has become much clearer. But there is still so much that we don't know. Like, what was happening with our genus 600,000 years ago? Going back this far lands us in the middle Pleistocene, which paleoanthropologists know as the muddle in the middle, due to the uncertainty over the classification of several human remains from this period. However, there are still some things that we know for definite about this time, with the main one being that we know that the last common ancestor between Homo neanderthalensis, the Denisovans, and Homo sapiens split during this time frame. This is based on genetic studies on finds from a site in Spain called Cima de los Huesos. Over 30 individuals of early Neanderthals were uncovered here, dating back to 430,000 years ago. Previous studies have found Neanderthals to be closely related to the Denisovans, so this finding suggested that the split between these two must have occurred sometime before 400,000 years ago, meaning the split between these two and the lineage that led to us must be much older, with estimates putting this split as happening over 700,000 years ago. But this is where the muddle comes in. As we know where the story begins, likely with the spread of Homo erectus across most of Asia, and we know where we end up, with the three species mentioned above. It's just the transition that's the problem, as who the last common ancestor was between the three species isn't clear, due to the large amount of finds found across the continents that have dubious classifications. Take finds from Africa as an example of this. Long thought to be the origin place of modern humans, it is the perfect place to start understanding this mystery. For example, let's begin with a skull found in 1921 from Zambia. Named Kwabe 1, this skull has quite a puzzling anatomy, sharing features with both older Homo species, such as a thick brow ridge, and those seen in more modern species, such as a bigger brain case. These features are shared with several other specimens from the continent, such as the Bodo, Ndutu, and Saldana craniums, which all date from around 600 to 300,000 years ago. However, this mismatch of features has made it hard to discern what species they should be attributed to, as it has often been said that these skulls represent a transition between Homo ergaster and modern humans. One name often given to this species is Homo rhodesiensis. This is the name given to all African fossils thought to represent Homo heidelbergensis, who we'll talk about later. But instead of them representing the actual species, they are seen as more of a variation. This name has fallen out of fashion over the years though, as not only are the remains more commonly attributed to Homo heidelbergensis, but the name Rhodesiensis honours Cecil Rhodes, a British imperialist who used abhorrent practices in order to gain power over the indigenous people of southern Africa. However, some people believe that these specimens should still have their unique classification, and in 2021, a paper was published that supposedly solved not only the issues with the name, but also the muddle in the middle entirely. This paper designated all remains attributed to Homo rhodesiensis as now belonging to a new species, Homo bodoensis. But they didn't stop there as they also reclassified all European remains of Homo heidelbergensis as representing early Neanderthals, and stated that Homo bodoensis is a direct common ancestor to modern humans. However, these suggestions have not been taken seriously, as they don't clarify much and violate standard nomenclature practices. One reason that it fails to clarify much is because it fails to point out the small differences these skulls have with each other, and more importantly, from Homo sapiens. As I mentioned, these skulls do indeed have similarities, but all of them are unique in their own way, such as having a different thickness of the brow ridge. Additionally, all the skulls are stated as having more archaic features 
than they do modern ones. Which means while these skulls are close to modern humans, they are more likely representative of an offshoot. One that possibly lived alongside the ancestor to modern humans. But Africa isn't the only continent that this confusion stretches to, as over in Asia, there are several hominin remains with dubious classifications, such as the Harbin and Hua Long Dong skulls, and the remains of Dali and Nanjing Man. While these remains are often attributed to Homo erectus, or the recently named Homo longi in the case of the Harbin skull, paleoanthropologists are a little hesitant to say these are definite, as a lot of the research done on these has been conducted very recently. So scientists don't want to jump the gun when designating species. However, Asia was much more diverse during this time than was once thought. This has driven more research on how these populations influence the evolution evolution of our species around this time. And at the center of this are the remains I mentioned earlier, called Nanjing Man. These remains are a pair of partial skulls belonging to a male and female hominin. These skulls are usually attributed as belonging to Homo erectus, but what is unique about them is that they are way older than any other specimens of this species from Asia, being dated to around 600 thousand years ago. This finding pushed back the earliest known evidence of Homo erectus in Asia by over 200,000 years. This brought into question Homo erectus's involvement in human evolution, as it's now clear that the species was in Asia long enough to interact with other human species, but to what extent is still unclear. Another exciting idea surrounding these findings is that they might be ancestral to all hominins that came after them in Asia. These skulls have a much smaller brain case than most hominins, and possess archaic features and more robust skulls, whereas latter hominin skulls have the more typical mixture that we saw in the African hominins. It's clear that the Nanjing hominid and the later specimens are part of a currently undiscovered area of human evolution, and seemingly hold some exciting answers. Still, that's everywhere at this time, right? Well, let's see if indeed that is the case as we shift our attention over to Europe, where I can finally now talk about Homo heidelbergensis. And where do I begin? See, this species has long been considered the last common ancestor between modern humans and Neanderthals. But whether this name can be given to all transitional fossils found across the old world is still debated. As I previously mentioned, some believe that the African remains of this species should be attributed to Rhodesiensis. If the latter is true, then only the European remains can be called Homo heidelbergensis. This would make Heidelbergensis ancestral to both Neanderthals and Denisovans, which is backed up by shared morphological characteristics the species has with the other two. Along with this, as previously mentioned, the split between modern humans and Neanderthals happened some 700,000 years ago. This is well out of the typical range usually assigned to Homo heidelbergensis remains from Europe which date to around 400 to 300,000 years ago. All this has led to Homo heidelbergensis no longer being considered the last common ancestor between humans and Neanderthals. But all isn't lost, as there is another hominin that may still hold the key to understanding this mystery. That species being Homo antecessor. Described in 1997, this species shook up our understanding of human evolution. This species has many features in its face similar to those found in modern humans, such as a relatively flat face. But where this gets interesting is the age of the specimens, that are dated to around 1 million years ago. This is much older than all previous hominins discussed in this video, which led this species to take the place of Homo heidelbergensis as the last common ancestor of humans and Neanderthals. However, genetic research done in 2020 found that this species isn't a direct ancestor and is instead a sister group to this mysterious last common ancestor. Furthermore, this species has led to the idea that just because a skull has both modern and archaic characteristics, it doesn't mean that it is representative of a transitional form between the two. 
Since the discovery of Homo antecessor, it has been pointed out that many of the features seen in the modern human face may have evolved multiple times throughout multiple populations rather than in one. Because the features of the face are driven by factors such as diet and thus the environment. Does everyone now understand why this whole period is a bit of a mess? So, even after all the discoveries and leaps made in our understanding of this time, we're still far from solving this muddle in the middle. This begs the question of what we would need to help clarify this mess. Well, I am not qualified enough to answer that, but one thing is for sure. All these specimens listed have something to do with the transition from early hominins to those that come much later. And I, for one, am looking forward to any discoveries that will be made regarding this topic. But this is far from the only confusing thing in human evolution. And if you want to learn about some other mysteries of this topic, then click the video on the screen. Until next time, bye bye.